What's up? This is Ray. Welcome back. Hey, I know what you're thinking. What is that on my man's face? It's not what you think. It is not a Corona mask, although you can use it as one. <laughs> this is a cyanotype. Um, a few months ago, I did a video tutorial on how to do cyanotypes in camera. I don't think anyone's ever done that on YouTube before. It's kind of an obscure thing. But that video became so popular, I got so many comments, especially from ladies, finally. Um, and I got a lot of questions as to what is a cyanotype and stuff. So because that video was so popular, I decided to do a tutorial on cyanotype. Most people do it on paper or things like that, but I'm also going to show you how to do it on fabric as well. Um, cyanotype is a chemical process. You put the chemical on a surface, leave it out in the sunlight, the ultraviolet rays, turn it into this bl beautiful blue color. There's a little more to it than that, but that's the whole point of this video. Show you how to do it, uh, the tools you need, and kind of how it's much easier than you think. It's easy to do, but it's real hard to perfect. So, uh, oh, I'm also going to show you how to do, turn your photographs into cyanotype. Look at this good looking guy right here. Yeah, man. So yeah, if you're interested in doing cyanotype, stick around. I'm going to show you everything pretty much there is to know, basically, for beginners. And uh, if you're curious, stick around. I'm going to get right into it. Okay, so before I go any further, I want to thank Jacquard Products. Uh, they make all kinds of cyanotype kits for anyone that's trying to get into it. And uh, when I told them what I was trying to do, make these type of tutorials, they were kind enough to send me um, the chemicals and even some cyanotype fabric that's already pre-treated. I'm going to show you how to use that also. So thank you, uh, Jacquard, for that. And I'll put some links below where you can get this stuff. So uh, cyanotypes, I think, was invented sometime in the 1800. It's really mixing two chemicals together. And when you mix those chemicals together, they become light sensitive. And what you do from there is you may take a brush or a sponge. You may sponge it onto a, a paper, for example. It's best to use um, like a watercolor paper or a heavier craft type of paper. Um, and then you have to dry it first. Uh, once it's dry, you put it out in the sun. What's tricky is depending on how strong the sun is, uh, you may not have to leave it out long. You may only need to leave it out five minutes. But if it's a cloudy day, you may have to leave it out 20 minutes or more. So it's a, it's a, there's an art to it, to experimenting, seeing how long you need to leave it out. Some people even do wet cyanotypes. Um, they put it out while it's wet, and they may put um, flowers or different type of things on it where the color of the flowers or whatever will bleach into that wet uh, fabric or paper, and they get some beautiful results also. So there's a lot of ways to experiment with it, but that's the basic as far as the chemicals are concerned and how to use it. All right, here's another important tidbit, um, how to get the best out of your cyanotypes. After you're done your exposure, carefully bring it inside in a subdued light area to rinse it. Um, I've seen people take the glass off, take the flowers off the paper, and rinse it in sunlight. No, you don't want to do that <laughs> because the sunlight is still acting on that portion of the cyanotype that was covered while it's in the sun rinsing, so you're not going to get the perfect white um, background that you're looking for. So always be patient, take it inside before you take it apart and rinse it. Uh, and rinse it well, because if you don't, if there's any of that cyanotype material left on this white area, eventually in time the sun will start to act on it. Um, the next thing to know is when you rinse it, it's not going to be this perfect blue immediately. Um, if you let it sit a few days, it will oxidize and it will become this perfect blue. But what, what everyone does is they'll make a bowl of, of water and put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in it. And what's incredible, as soon as you dip it in there, you immediately see it turning this dark navy blue. It's, it's kind of amazing to watch. And um, yeah, and after that you just rinse it out, hang it to dry, and you're pretty much done. They say cyanotype doesn't really fade. Um, it lasts you know, a long time. I wouldn't want to watch this in bleach though, but um, one thing, good thing to know is it, it's like a permanent color and it's not going to come out too easily. So that's really the basics on how to do cyanotypes. Okay, so when you're doing these, it's always a good idea to use some kind of frame or jig or setup to make it easy for that glass to clamp down uh, on top of your cyanotype material. 
what I like to use is this frame right here that I got from Michaels the reason I like it it has four clips built into the back one of them I accidentally broke off but <laughs> it makes it so much easy to put the cyanotype paper and material in there and just clamp it down and put it out in the sun and that way if as I'm moving it around it won't shift um, so I'll put a link where you can find this below um, hopefully someplace on Amazon okay so I'm gonna show you something real cool you could do with cyanotypes you can actually turn one of your photographs into a cyanotype uh, the way you do it is first you open an image in your computer editor um, then you flip that image into a black and white and then finally you flip the image again into a negative and then you're going to use these clear acetate sheets I'm going to put a link below where you can get these on Amazon and you put that in your printer and print them as that negative and that's what you're going to put on top of your cyanotype material and lay it out in the Sun but to get the best effect before you print it tweak that negative adjust the highlights and the shadows to make sure you have uh, detail in them because what I found is just turning a photo into a negative doesn't make it perfectly applied to a cyanotype so you're going to want to tweak it and also adjust how long you leave it out in the sun uh, to find the best uh, uh, effect but I was shocked how much detail I was able to get out of these photos in a cyanotype so it's definitely something uh, cool and worth trying all right I'm gonna show you something cool let's say you're a beginner you don't want to get too heavy into it you don't want to buy chemicals and all of this stuff you just want to do some experimenting with your kids Jacquard sells these um, pre-treated fabric it's already has the cyanotype chemical in it it's dried and it's in a foil pack um, so this comes in a 10 pack and what you can do is you can put whatever material you want on top of it lay it out in the Sun as usual rinse it and um, it's kind of perfect size to put in a little picture frame I'm gonna show you one I did um, right now and I really love this one so much I framed it for my living room it just came out that great so this is a good thing to do for kids um, but if you look at this what do you notice it's kind of small right at some point if you enjoy doing this you're gonna outgrow this size you're gonna want something bigger um, so this is what you can do in that case that's where you can get you can step up to these this size these are white bandanas I think I got this at Walmart in a 10 pack um, and this is like the perfect size to upgrade to experiment with because there's so much more you could do with it and it's light and thin so you're not going to waste a lot of the cyanotype chemical experimenting with this so uh, yeah those are some things to keep in mind okay when you put your cyanotype out and let it sit in the Sun how do you know when it's done how do you know when it's time to bring it in and rinse um, and that it was exposed enough you're going to notice as soon as you put it out there it's going to start to change color it's going to turn from this yellow to a, a dark blue and if you leave it out long enough it's going to start turning to like a brown bronze color and once it reaches that point um, it's not really going to expose anymore uh, that's kind of the maximum but it's good it's it's good for you to notice um, the color changes that way you can kind of tell when when it's safe to bring in and after you rinse it if it's not dark enough or if it's too dark you can learn from there um, how to adjust for the for those in the future so those are some like fine-tuning tips to get the best results all right I'm gonna tell you something really important that I wish I had done when I started doing cyanotypes I wish I had written down the times uh, and the setting of each particular piece of art for example if you put this art out for three minutes and you come back and you rinse it you may look at it and you say man I wish it was darker but if you didn't write it down you won't know how much longer to make that exposure next time you may want to make it five minutes next time but if you didn't uh, keep a record of how long that was you won't know how to improve so there's so many of these that I messed up um, they were either too dark or too light for that particular reason so that's one quick tip in doing cyanotypes all right so that's my video on cyanotype hopefully you learned something hopefully you benefited hopefully I didn't leave anything out because it's, there's so much to talk about so if I, if I did leave anything out definitely leave a question or comment below if you try this definitely reach out to me and maybe send me some pictures uh, of your social media or something on your results I really like to see what others are doing and 
I didn't realize how popular Cyanotype was. There's a large community of people doing these and um, doing them in all kinds of different ways. They use vinegar, um, all different kind of other chemicals they, they add uh, to get different colors and effects. And it's, it's like unlimited what you can do. So yeah, man, I really had fun doing this. Thanks to Jacquard for providing some of these materials. Um, and keep in mind, hey, no matter what you do for your art, whether it's cyanotype, photography, video, painting, as always, until next time, keep it real.